Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Over the past few months, I've made some videos about Ozempic and more recently Munjaro because if you haven't heard, these medications are taking the world by storm at the moment. Now this is probably the last video about this topic that I'll be making for a while because it's just all I have been hearing about for the past couple of years. But if you didn't know, these medications are known as GLP-1 analogs. And over the past few years, we've seen new types of them pop out, the newest being Munjaro. Now click here to watch the video where I discuss that one. But because there's a few of them around, I wanted to just make a video that clears the air and explains what the differences between them all are. Now they all belong to the same class of medications, so they work in the same way, but there are some slight differences in terms of how often they need to be used, their dosages, and how effective they are. I'll be going through all of that today, so let's just get into it. If you've made it this far in the video, you probably have some idea of what GLP-1 analogs are, but to quickly summarize, they are a group of medications that are relatively new that are used for treating type 2 diabetes because they help to reduce blood sugar levels. But one other effect that they have been found to cause is weight loss, and it's actually because of this that the medications have become hugely popular, leading to shortages worldwide of a lot of them, particularly Ozempic. Now, in terms of how these medications work, I have gone into this a bit more in depth in my previous videos, but basically there is a hormone that is naturally made in your body and it's called glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1. And this hormone gets released in response to eating food. The hormone then triggers insulin release, which will then reduce blood sugar levels. Now in type 2 diabetes, this hormone may not work as well, so these medications mimic the effects of the naturally found GLP-1. And that's why they are called GLP-1 analogs, because they work in the same way as this hormone. Now the thing about GLP-1 is that when your body makes this hormone, it doesn't last very long, because it's just meant to help out after eating food. So that is a challenge that the GLP-1 analog medications have had to try and overcome. So what are all the different types? Well, here is a list and I have also included some brand names as well because they are probably how everyone knows them. Now, as you can see, we have six different types at the moment. Exenatide or Bieta, which is the brand name, was actually the first of these to come out. It got approved in America for use in type 2 diabetes in 2005. At this point, the issue of the GLP not lasting a long time was not solved, so this was a medication that needed to be injected daily. So we can see that these medications have been around for a while. Then about 10 years later, we saw a couple more types hit the market. In 2014, liraglutide, which is known as Saxenda, and duleglutide, known as Trulicity, came out, and this is where we got to see some advancements, because Trulicity only had to be given once a week, so they managed to make the GLP last longer. Then we come to the more recent ones. Ozempic came out in 2017, and that was where it was found that weight loss was a significant side effect, and well, the rest is history, because now everyone has heard of at least Ozempic, and now we have Munjaro, which came out last year. And I'm sure there will be more in the coming years because there is demand for these medications, clearly. So let's just go through some of the differences. I want to start with how often they need to be injected. So here's a chart just summarizing the differences and I will be referring to this quite a bit throughout the video. But you can see that when it comes to injection frequency, it's either a once daily, twice daily, or once weekly injection. And this is to do with how long they are able to get the GLP-1 to last. So Bieta was the twice daily because it was the first to come out and they hadn't figured out how to make it last longer. As you can imagine, that's a pretty inconvenient frequency, which is why this one isn't too commonly used anymore. Now Saxenda is a once daily, which again, isn't ideal, but I have seen some people switch to Saxenda because of the shortages in Ozempic. Trulicity, Ozempic, and Munjaro are all once a week, 
because advancements were made and manufacturers were able to make them long acting. So these are most ideal in terms of convenience for people to use because I'm pretty sure anyone you asked would rather an injection once a week than once a day. Now the next thing that is different is the dosages. I won't spend too much time on this but you can see that they all have different dose ranges going from a small number to a higher one. So for example, Ozempic starts at 0.5 milligrams and then goes as high as 2 milligrams. Now the reason they all have these ranges is because regardless of which one you are prescribed, you will start at the lower dose range and that is because nausea is a very common side effect that people experience on these medications. So starting at a lower dose and then slowly moving up can limit the amount of nausea that you may experience. And all of them cause this, you can't really escape it, unfortunately. Now, the last thing I will touch on is the effectiveness of these different types of GLP-1 analogs. They aren't all as effective as each other, and that's because as time goes on and newer medications come to market, they tend to be a little better because there's been more time to research and more time to work on them to make them more efficient. So it's no surprise that the older ones like Bayetta, which came out in 2005, are a little less effective. But just to make things clear, all of them are good for treating type 2 diabetes. There is extensive research to show this. But Munjaro, the newest of the lot, it doesn't have a whole lot of research behind it yet because it's new. But so far, it's been showing to be more effective. And that is because it's the only GLP-1 analog so far that has a dual action. So what does this mean? Well, Munjaro is not only a GLP-1 analog, it's a GIP analog too. I covered this in my previous video on Munjaro, but GIP or gastric inhibitory peptide is another hormone in the body that does similar things to GLP-1. So it also leads to insulin release in response to eating food. And so because of this, Munjaro has two ways instead of one that it can give its effects by. And that's why we are finding more and more that Munjaro is managing blood sugar and reducing weight better than the other medications that I have mentioned in this video. But Ozempic is not far behind in terms of effectiveness, which is why it's become the most popular. Now, the one thing I haven't really gone into in this video is costs, and that is because different countries have different rules regarding this, and I'm not too well versed in how America, for example, charges. But in Australia, if you have type 2 diabetes and you meet certain requirements, the government will cover most of the costs of Ozempic and Trulicity. Saxenda and Munjaro are really expensive because they are private. Now, that's all I have to say for now. Hopefully that helps clear things up and highlights the main differences surrounding this group of medications that all of a sudden are appearing everywhere on social media and the news. Make sure you remain vigilant in staying away from misinformation and talk to your health professionals when you have questions regarding these. Because while yes, these medications have exploded in popularity, they are still relatively new and we have no long-term usage data, which means that we don't know what the long-term effects of these are. So get all the information you need and then make the best decision for yourself that's really all you can do. If you do have any questions about these medications or anything else to do with health, then comment below and I will do my best to help out. But if you learned something or enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. I will see you all next week with a completely different topic altogether. And until then, keep playing the long game.